Hey everybody, welcome to the Free at Last podcast. I'm Mick. And I'm Tammy. And we're coming to you live from the Appalachian Mountains right here in the home of Eastern Kentucky. Let's turn that metronome off. <laughs> and uh, we're excited about the um, the topic tonight. Before we get into all that, we want to get into our business. Uh, first, we want to thank our sponsors, the MKM uh, Soap Company on 4500 Open Fork Road. Um, I'll let uh, Sister Tammy share about some of their products. Yes, we uh, actually made a trip there this past weekend. And uh, the first thing that I wanted to show, I feel like the uh, price is right, but you see this here soap holder. And it has two suction cups for you to put in the shower to use with the MKM soap. And so we really like these products. Uh, this time I chose Lemon Verbana, which is what um, Miss Beetle wore on oh. Little House on the Prairie. And it smelled really good. And also they have... Um, it's called a skin potion hand lotion, and it's smooth, creamy, and doesn't leave your hands all greasy, and I got that in Lemon Verbana, too, and they have all kinds of flavors, so there's a smell for everyone, and also, we got the Haldeman Water, and this is the Black Cherry. I love taking these to work. I call these my poo sprays because they easily fit in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a lot of these scents too. They're at MKM and they are wonderful products. We are repeat customers. And so we encourage you guys to go out. This Saturday, they will be having a tree lighting there in Haldeman. And uh, the community is invited out, hot chocolate, popcorn, and just uh, lighting of the tree and to begin the festive Christmas season. From, uh, from what I remember, he said that uh, the way they're going to light it, they have like uh, one of those things like you see on uh, cartoons, like the way they lift the dyn dynamite. They have that hammer and push down, and then that's how they're going to... Uh, that's how they're going to light the tree. And my you may ask what this is. <laughs> it's not a collar because it doesn't have any holes in it. It's not a disciplinary <clears throat> uh, tool, as it may look like. <laughs> so, yeah. What is this, Nick? This is called a strop. Strop. And what it is is uh, he also has, like, razors, uh, old-time razors in the shop. So what this is is you get some um, some jeweler's rouge. And you put on your leather and or a knife. That's what I'm going to use it for. My carving knives, and then you you can hone in on your uh, your carving blades or your shaving blades. <laughs> so yeah, MKM has a lot of stuff up there, like neat, practical stuff that um, is just cool. Yeah. So check them out. So another uh, quick announcement <laughs> that I want to give uh, before we uh, go in. Um, I want to interview some different people on the, uh, the Podbean app. So if that's something you're interested in, if you have a, um, a story, uh, you'd like to talk about, um, um, you know, any, anything dealing with the supernatural or the, um, or the odd and the weird and would like to talk about it, I'd like to, um, I'd like to interview you on the Podbean app. Uh, you can check out one episode we did with Brother George where we talked about the um, where we talked about the uh, Holy Rollers. Yeah, the Holy Rollers. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, my mind just went blank. But we uh, talked about the the Holy Roller uh, toy drive. Uh, so if you want to kind of get an idea of uh, how the flow is, just uh, get with us and we'll we'll walk you through about how to get the app and um, get you set up and we will get your story heard. Amen. We want to welcome in the group tonight, Morgan and George. Hey, 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 you guys. Glad to have you in tonight. If you are also watching and 
uh, we don't know that you're in here unless you say hey or hello to us. So <laughs> or yo yo yo. <clears throat> and uh, so just give us a little wave or something to let us know you're in here. So our topic tonight, um, I was in conversation with somebody um, over the couple weekends ago, and um, the idea came to me about identity crisis. And um, when I was thinking about what the um, what the topic could be tonight, I know uh, one of our topics is we always talk about occultic churches and that kind of thing, but. It seemed like the Holy Spirit dropped it into my spirit that the reason why we was unable to discern quicker that we was in a, an occultic type church is because at that time, uh, Tammy and I had an identity of crisis. And what I mean by that is like we didn't know who we was in Christ. And um, the place where we was at, we was wanting to sharpen our 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 holy skills uh, to say <laughs> we was wanting to learn the uh, church side of things and that's where we really messed up because um, you know sometimes even in church uh, you can get into um, groups that can be kind of clicky um, and I know that sounds odd talking about the church but you know, it can happen anywhere. Uh, anytime you're in a social setting, um, you know, if you are if you don't know, especially church, if you don't know who you are in the Lord, then you can find yourself, like, compromising, like, um, what the Bible, who the Bible says you really are to try to fit in to the social surroundings where you're at. And so, like, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a little scratchy throat tonight, but, um, an identity crisis, um, when you identify that there is a crisis, is when you know that something just doesn't feel right. And so we all want to fit in. We all want to feel included, and we all want to be a part of something bigger. And, you know, depending on what um, social gathering, social club, if you will, that you grab gravitate toward, it's like they want to make you into something that you're not so you change the way you act you change the way you talk you change the way you dress and it's like it's mind control in that sense of they're trying to mold you into what they want you to be and one quote that I've always loved is in a world that you can be anything be yourself yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is not fitting into a mold that someone else is trying to put you into, but to identify who you are in Christ and be you, because God wants you. He doesn't want the the gathering where everybody looks the same, talks the same, acts the same. He wants you individually, just as you are, so that he can have that relationship with you that's like no other, like your fingerprint. It's going to be like no other with him. And before we get in too much deeper, I, I want to say that um, we don't want you to confuse this with um, church correction because, you know, sometimes it's like we need to be corrected by um, those who are, who God has placed over us and... Um, you know, this is not to be confused with that because what we're talking about is, you know, what they what they tried to put on you, it can't be confirmed with the Bible. And, uh, you know, biblical correction from godly leaders, whatever they're, whatever they're correcting you or, or re trying to reshape you or trying to, whatever they're challenging you on biblically, they should be able to back it up by Scripture. And that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is just a blind. They want you to follow. They want you to follow them blindly, without questioning anything. And it's like one of the first things. That if they, if they try to get you not to question their authority, then that could be a major identity crisis. 
And we got Kay Griffin Barker. Welcome. Welcome to the group tonight, Kay. Um, one thing that, you know, one one example that I can give that's kind of like when we look back on it, it's funny now, but at the time it was like, what were they thinking? <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, Mary Kay has makeup. And um, so in this occult church that we were in, the main... Uh, leader, she wanted to try the newest Mary Kay colors, you know, and this was like in the mid 2000s, and so all of her little people under her that were trying to be like her, they tried the makeup too, so it was on a Sunday night, we all come into church, and her little cronies, <laughs> her little, her <laughs> little, her little group of people, they all came in and had this new Mary Kay makeup on. And Mickey's like, what is this, the circus? <laughs> and so, like, because they had put their makeup on and they all look like circus clowns, literally, because there and were the blues and thing, yellows and reds in their eyeshadow. And, and the funny thing <laughs> was, it's like back in those days, it's like people that exercise, they wore these, uh, um, well, back in my day, they were called jogging pants, like jogging suits. Sweat suits. Yeah, they, suit. yeah, they had like these pantsuits on, like they were ju just walked a marathon, and it was kind of funny because like it almost looked like a Star Trek episode gone bad or something, because <laughs> they were all zipped up and. <laughs> so yeah, Mickey being the vocal thorn in the side that he can be sometimes, he's like, "What is this a circus?" And they were like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> but they were all trying to be like her and to put the makeup on and I'm just like oh my and you know that's that's like another um another red flag to look out for like when they try to present you and we heard this all the time um they they would say you don't just represent God but you represent the church which means you represent us right. <laughs> and uh <clears throat> you know it's and that's like one of the things that um they are very 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 concerned about their image and how uh, they look instead of yeah. how christ looks in them it's how they are presented to the outside world in the community yeah and i'll never forget one time uh, one of the leaders we was in a meeting and um, i can't remember what we was talking about but one of the things i'll never forget as they sit back in their leader's chair and, and they did this with their fingers and she made the comment. She said, she said, there's nothing I won't do to protect the image of this church. And I remember like, even back then I was like, wow. And you know, the first scripture that came to my mind when she said that was even in the Old Testament even, where it says, thou shall have no other image before me. And, like, I didn't have the wisdom to know it back then, but, like, even even the leadership there, they were in an identity crisis because if you think that the church or whoever your ministry or, or whatever that, you're, that God's put you in charge of, if you think that you have to protect the image of it, then your ministry or calling, whatever, gifting, whatever, that just became an idol into the eyes of the Lord. Um, you know, I'm reminded of what uh, Brother George says all the time, that what God calls, he will sustain. And, you know, if you have to go out pr protecting the image of what you proclaim God is calling you to do, then chances are he's called you to something else. And, you know, it's like God, when we're talking about the identity of who you are, God, you know, he loves us all equally the same. That's the one thing that, about God is he doesn't change. He's love. And that's what, you know, he wants us to display into the world is love and light. And, you know, we always go back to the basics that God sent his only son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And so it's like, that's what it's all about. You know, right. it's not about um, 
wearing the latest fashions. It's not about having your hair the like everybody else's or a body image like everyone else's. God wants you to be you. And it's not about the number in your church. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, it's like once you get... If you're in leadership and you get the, um, if you get your eyes on how many you have in the service, then then that's where you get into danger of compromising the message to draw people in. And, you know, with everything going on in the world, it's like, you know, you've heard a lot of people say, well, it's just me and Jesus. And, you know, sometimes it is just you and Jesus. And, you know, it's like he's looking at the heart issue. He's looking at, you know, the inside. And, you know, that's all he's concerned about is you. And to, you know, to find our identity in Christ, we're free to be us. We're free to be who we are in him. And so we shouldn't try to model ourselves after you know, an idol or an image because, like Mickey said, God doesn't want us to have idols before him. And a lot of things, especially we see on social media when you scroll through, like, Instagram or something like that, it's like you have all these ads for all these beauty things, all these weight loss things, um... All of these things right now are popping up things you feel like you've got to have because everybody else has them. And this has been going on since the world began. You know, um, you've heard the phrase of trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's like, and that's what the world wants us to do is to keep up with the latest trends and fads. And in the church world, as we have seen the church develop on social media in the way that it's changed in the last 10 to 15 years, it's like, um, you know, it's like the newer churches are wearing skinny jeans and their hairs all flop to one side and they're holding their Starbucks cup, you know, yeah. but it's like, that's, and it's like you see people trying to, be like them, you know, or yeah. talk different, and it's just like you can tell they're putting it on. It's I'll never forget the uh, the one place we were visiting, and this is just, and this guy was serious, and it's just kind of let you know how how out there we can get mentally. But um, we were attending a church service where this very, if I if I said his name, you would know who it was. Chances are. Uh, but we were attending the service where he was ministering at, and um, at the end of the service, we got to go up and shake his hand and say hi, and we got a picture with him. Well, in the area where we took the picture, there was like um, this minister had um, had a cup of coffee he was drinking, so he got through with it, and he threw, threw the cup in the trash, and a friend of mine ran over there to the trash can and picks <laughs> that cup up, it said, "Oh, this is the cup where brother so and so drank from. Drank from the cup. It's highly anointed. If I drink from this cup, I will have his anointing." <laughs> and I, I remember saying, "Was like, well, brother, he slobbers in a cup as much as you do." <laughs> He's like, "I'll never wash this cup." And you know, if he if he went on like that, if he if he really did like keep that cup, that cup would be an idol. <laughs> Yeah, like, that's not how the anointing flows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of those stories you look back on, and 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 don't get me wrong, there's there's been a lot of areas that I've had to grow in grace, too, but, like, it's just one of the funny stories I remember yeah. about somebody else. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing was, he wasn't joking. Like, yeah. we might joke you know but like he was serious like we were like no brother that's not how it works <laughs> can you read that there uh sister Kate says so thankful to be 
deeper in our Lord God Almighty now. We are to come into the beginning, his sons and daughters walking here upon the land. John 1 through 12, come into being and let the world see him and see Jesus in us, walking in love and forgiveness, going outside the walls and going to highways and hedges, bringing in the greatest harvest of all time. Amen. Yep. And you know, after we came out of of that situation, the one thing that the Lord has taught both of us is once you find out who you are in the Lord, because see, most church situations, it's like they teach you how to, um, they teach you how to act in church, but a kingdom church is going to teach you how to go out into the highways and byways and to be able to compel people to come in. And, you know, to me, I think it's one of the reasons why, which I know, like, I know with us, like, usually when we witness, a lot of people that we, that are put on our path are in a state of church hurt. They're either in a state of church hurt or they're in a state of, um, you know, that they don't see the church in a better situation than what they're in now. And everybody's heard it. Oh, they're, they're all hypocrites there. But I truly believe that if we as the sons and daughters of God get into the Word of God and apply what it says, because sometimes you can read it and not apply it. You know, it's, the Bible says it's it's the truth that sets you free. You can read truth all day long, but you don't get set until you apply it. But I believe that if we if we read that word and we apply it to our lives, then God, like, he molds us into who he wants us to be, to go out into the world and, and find him. Because when you think about it, what did Jesus do? He went to the synagogue, yes, but he didn't say, all right, we we got here at, uh, at Hebrew East. We're going to camp right here at the synagogue on, on Winchester Street, and we're going to do all the ministry here. No, he went out. He went out and he healed. He went out and he cast out demons. He went out and he rose the dead. Now, we can get the attitude like everything's fine right here in church. Let's just sit on our blessed assurance and just wait for the Lord to come back. Do you know that that the enemy knows more about what time we're in right now than the church does? Right. <clears throat> and that goes along with what, you know, a crisis is that we're talking about tonight. It's a... Um, a time when a difficult or important decision must be made. So it's like we're at the time right now that we have to make a decision. We've heard it from the time we were little. Choose this day who you're going to serve. That's right. And so we're at a crisis where a decision needs to be made. And whether uh, it's in your own personal life or if you know it's for someone else, pray for someone else that's in a crisis. Um, you know, I can't remember exactly now where we talked about this, but, you know, for those that are on drugs, alcohol, um, that are addicted to something, you know, we can say, oh, what a shame it is. They're, you know, they're like that. Well, we need to pray for them because right. their soul is in a crisis and, they're trying to fill the voids in their life. And, you know, it's like they may not see a way or a hope out. And we are the church. We are his hands and his feet. Right. So it's up to us to pray for them, show them love. And, you know, because like Mickey was talking about, we've heard it from the time we've started church and still today. I don't go to church because uh, I can live better than what they're living in the church. Or I've been to church and I've been hurt. So I'm just going to not go. And it's like, you know, if you've had a church hurt, you need to heal from that. Yeah. And so a crisis situation 
is at hand because if you are using any excuse not to draw closer to the Lord, you're in crisis. Not only that, but just as the brother was using that cup as an idol, if your church hurt and you're using that as an excuse, that excuse is your idol. And because it's like you're drawing closer to that excuse than you are to the Lord. And in idols, it's just simply anything that comes between you and the Lord. And, you know, I don't want to get into this in great detail, but we all know that society is pushing to, quote, find your identity. Um, we are seeing people identify as something that they're not. Um, they're trying to change their identity of gender. They're trying to change um, their identity by becoming an animal or acting like animals. And so we certainly are in a time of identity crisis because we have always heard that what is going on in the natural is going on in the spirit. That's right. And so we see that with our own eyes, the times that we're living in, the crisis that we're in, that's also spiritually speaking as well, that we have to uh, wake up. It's time to be alert. It's time to clean your ears out, That's right. <laughs> wash your face, wash your eyes out, whatever you need to do to draw closer to the Lord. And, you know, this is something that we would hope that all would come to repentance and all would be saved. But the word says there will be many that on that great, on that great day, they're going to hear the sound of the trumpet and they're not going to be going because they did not commit their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can just, you know, I can picture the confusion on their face and the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, yep. you know. And it's like the time is winding down quickly. And I know that you've heard that from the beginning of when you were little in a Sunday school classroom. Yep. The Lord is coming back and he's coming back quickly, you know. It's, it's, we're at a place of urgency, and I hope that you can feel that tonight, that we are at that place where we must pray for people, and, you know, it's like we can't drag people into the kingdom of God. We can show them the way, but I feel like that there will be those that are left behind, but they will have heard, but it's a personal choice that they have to make, and you know, I pray that the Holy Spirit go to them, convict their hearts that they would have, they wouldn't even have a desire for those things that they're addicted to, that it would, it would make them sick to even look at it or yep. to smell it. And that, you know, during that window of sobriety that they have, whether it be five minutes or a day or two. I pray that the Holy Spirit convict them, and they can, and they know that they are in a crisis. Yep. So bottom line, it's like, you know, the church needs to come out of that, open up their Bible, and come out of the identity crisis to know who we are, what we're put here for, and be strong and do it. Amen. I love Brother George's faith. He says, I am identifying as a billionaire and good looking. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. We get up every day. We work. We make an honest living. And we sow into the kingdom of God. And we are rich in him. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. <laughs> That, that's very hickish. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. That'd be our uh, hip-hop band, Lacking Nothing. That we, you know, we're blessed. Our cups are overflowing. Our barns are full. We're able to give out and be blessed by giving to other people and sharing. And um, it's all because of living in the kingdom. I know for me, it's like God... I pray to be blessed enough in the future to where I can be like the undercover boss. Because, like, my favorite part on the undercover boss is, like, at the end, 
where he's like, well, I'm going to pay for your college and, and all that. <laughs> I know, those shows, are just, they pull on my heartstrings because, like, <laughs> these people that go in as the undercover boss and they're just wanting to see the flow of their business behind the scenes and these people don't even realize it's, like, corporate in there. And, you and, know, you think about it, think of the spiritual overtones with that. <laughs> And it's like when it comes down to it, he's like, I want to bless you. You have the vision of this company. And it's like, you know, when they start tearing up and choking up and it's just like a, to be a blessing to someone else and see them really, truly appreciate what you've done for them. There's nothing like it to see someone blessed. Um, Brother Josh is going to do the replay we thank him for listening and tuning in and uh, we do appreciate each and every one that watched the replay and just hang out with us on a weekday and we just we do this from love yeah. um we just we at first i would mickey said we're going to do this would have been probably i don't know 10 years ago maybe but he's <laughs> like we're going to talk on video and then we're going to share it and then it would take like all night to upload like a thirty minute video or something. It would on take YouTube. about it. It take more than that because like we would do like a segment and you would like sit there and cry. Oh, like, yeah, oh. I can't do this. I, I'm nervous. <laughs> I can't do this. And Mickey's like, "Do you know how long it takes to upload these things? We got to get a crack in here. It's like dry it up, suck it up. You can talk to it." You know, when I say talk to it, talk to the camera, because you have that little eye, you know, that looks at you. But I, that is something that the Lord has delivered me from, is being able to talk freely and openly into the camera. Because yes, I he was has. once nervous. <laughs> oh, that was, I would sweat and cry, and Mickey's like, what is wrong? I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> but I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap things up. <laughs> I reckon we will. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you know anybody that has a good um, come to Jesus, uh, deliver from drugs and alcohol, um, had a deliverance session, anything you want to share, uh, get a hold of me and um, we will... I'd love to interview you, uh, me and Tammy both, like on the Podbean app, and then uh, that way we can get it out there on all the outlets, and then uh, you can share it and uh, yep. we'll help us spread the word of God by letting everybody know what God is doing through you. We want to interview you, <laughs> but we love you guys. Um, Think of me as Uncle Mick Sam. <laughs> Uncle Mick Sam. <laughs> We love you, George. Thank you for the shout out and participation. And we just thank everyone for your support. And we just pray that you have a blessed, favored week. Goodness and mercy shall find you this week. And uh, we just pray that you have a blessed, healthy rest of your week. Love you guys. Till next time.